What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Agrarian Skies 2. Oh, yeah, we're getting our sky block on. So, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing awesome. I've been spending a bunch of time here in our little humble base. I just got done smashing a whole bunch of cobblestone and gravel and sieving all that gravel. Yep, we got some some resources now. Um, yeah, we're over this way. <laughs> I was like, I'm confused for a second. So yeah, I just got done smelting some stuff up. So we got, you know, four blocks of copper, uh, some more tin, some more aluminum, a little bit more iron. I think I went through about four stacks of gravel. We really need to get all that stuff automated. Um, so it turns out that generator that I made last episode, it does set things on fire. But the, uh, the mod author commented on that video I was talking about that. I was like, hopefully I don't burn my base down. And he said that if I upgrade to an iron generator, that it won't actually cause fire. But for now, I just removed the generator. Uh, we've gone through all the power that we had. It was enough to smash that full stack of cobblestone into gravel. And then half a stack of gravel into sand. It kind of appears that if it's partway processing, you can't get that part back I guess I'm um, I don't know doesn't really matter one piece of gravel whatever uh, so what I'm working on right now is I'm trying to make obsidian I got nine obsidian in my inventory I've been filling this thing up as much as possible I guess I slacked a little bit there uh, actually I've been taking the lava up and filling up our seared tank since I've been doing some smelting but yeah what I want to do is take this lava we stick it in the stone barrel that has water on top and oh wait that actually it rained a minute ago. <laughs> I didn't sleep in time. Let's break this thing. Whoops. Uh, stone barrel. Come here. Come here. Give it to me. Oh, man. Making a mess out of things. It had to rain and ruined everything. So, anyway, there's our stone barrel. Now it doesn't have rainwater in it, so we can right click a bucket of lava and that automatically turns them to a, into obsidian because we have a source block of water on top. Right. So now we have 10 obsidian. What does that mean? That's right, we're going to the nether. So I was going to wait to go to the nether until we had a jetpack. And then I was looking at our jetpacks here, all the different types that we can make. And for instance, a leadstone, that should be really easy to make. I mean, it takes a little bit of crafting to get all these bits and pieces and all this stuff. I mean, this isn't a problem, but this leather strap right here that requires leather. And we don't have any leather. Well, actually, we have one piece of leather. I actually don't even remember where we got that from. I think it was a reward bag. Where is it? Yeah, we got one piece of leather. Um, I could spawn cows. I could spawn cows and get leather that way. But I think we're going to be adventurous today. I think we're just going to go into the nether and see what's all there. I need this thing. Yeah, I put up my tools in preparation for heading to the nether. I guess I still need them a little bit for harvesting crops at the moment. All right, three more. Wheat. I only got two. Where'd the other one go? Oh, it's in here. There we go. Got it. So yeah, I want to go to the nether. So we got the uh, the obsidian there. I think we had a flint and steel somewhere. I remember making one. Yep, so we have flint and steel and we have the obsidian. The next part of this <laughs> problem is where are we going to set up the portal? I'm thinking we might expand out this way or we could just expand out our little smelter area this way a bit. Um, maybe we'll just like, yeah, maybe we'll just build a path out like this direction over here and just build a little thing so it's a little bit away from us. Uh, we want to contain any pigmen that'll spawn through the portal. I don't know if they're always hostile or if they're neutral. Uh, people have told me that the passive animals in this game are hostile, so I don't know what to expect with all of that, but we will figure that out. So, uh, another thing, I forgot to open this reward bag at the last, at the end of the last episode, so let's do that now. This is a good reward bag. And 16 dirt. That's, that's not terrible. I mean, we can make dirt, so, eh, whatever. I'll just put that away. Okay, so there is our reward bag done. Uh, I think there is also one more thing. Yeah, the, uh, power drive. We did this quest, but we didn't claim the reward, which is 16 coal. And this is going to lead us to do automatic sieving. Um, it says you are probably getting very tired of right-clicking on the sieve. You might have already attempted using some form of block clicker to automate the sieve, only to find out the jaded one is evil and has disabled that type of shenanigan. 
Uh, the correct method of automating sieves is to use a handy dandy auto sieve. Catch the name, right? Uh, it requires power, 10 RF tick to be exact, and it can be upgraded with fortune and speed upgrade. So that sounds awesome. Um, and that'll give us a reward bag too. Well, we made the automatic hammer last episode. Let's take a look. The automatic sieve. Let's just see what's required in this. So that's four invar, some invar nuggets, an electrum gear, and a silk mesh. That's actually not too bad. Um, so yeah, another thing people are telling me last episode is that we do have these gear casts, and I should be using that. We were given a gear cast as a reward a while ago, and I forgot about it because we were just given it. I didn't make it. Uh, so yeah, we could use a gear cast and pour metal, molten metal. I think it saves a little bit on resources when you make it that way. Maybe this is the only way actually to make Electrum gear. I don't see any other... Yeah, this is the only way actually. Okay, so I need to make some Electrum, which is silver and gold. Um, and then we need to pour it onto a thing. We don't have any Electrum, do we? No, we don't have any Electrum. Okay, so we need silver and gold, both of these guys here. Maybe I'll do two of each, and we'll just smelt those in the smeltery. Okay, so that should make some Electrum. And we'll go ahead and cast that onto the gear cast, right? Let's double click this. I hate everything being dark like that. <laughs> so we'll cast that over here. Okay, so this will take a minute to, to go. I can get my water back, actually. We can take this whole thing down. Um, I just set this up just to make some obsidian pretty quickly, and we got that all done, so that's good. Um, yeah, the Electrum. So it says four ingots. I'm not sure if that's enough or if I have to do another recipe's worth. Oh, it looks like that's enough. Yeah, four ingots is exactly what we need. Okay, so there we go. There's our Electrum gear. So then we just need our Invar. And, oh, we have exactly the right amount. We're going to need some nuggets. Then we're going to need the silk mesh, which is a little bit of string. I think it's nine string. Whoop. Uh, wrong thing. So nine string. And silk mesh. Okay, so it's silk mesh, the gear, some nuggets, and some invar. And there's an automatic sieve. Awesome. Okay, so that wasn't too terrible to do. Uh, we'll set this guy right next to his buddy right here, the automatic pulverizer. Alright, so that's what that looks like. They both hold a 64,000 RF, and the interface looks exactly the same. Okay, good to know. Uh, so let's look at the quest book. And what does this have to say? Um, well, that's just about it. So give us a reward bag. And this is a greater reward bag. So hopefully we'll get something epic, like a jetpack. Nope, we got <laughs> uh, just some blood magic, alchemy stuff. Oh, well, maybe next time. Oh, we've run out of inventory here. Birch seed, acacia. Um, yeah, I'll put these seeds over here in this chest. All right. So now that we got that done, yeah, it still wants... Oh, there's another thing. Auto smashing, which we've already completed. That's going to give us 64 dust. Okay, so auto smashing. Now that you have your sieve automated, wouldn't you like to stop hitting blocks with hammer? With hammers. With the newly patented automatic hammerer, you can do just that. For 6 RF a tick, never swing a hammer again. Unless you want to, weirdo. Alright, well that's pretty awesome. This unlocks a one quest elsewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to be going to the nether quest today. So this wants us to find a surprise in a different dimension. And I, that's actually kind of got me a little concerned. Um, <laughs> maybe it won't be that bad. I really don't know what to expect. Uh, but tell you guys what, let me clean up my inventory. I'm going to build out a little spot over here to set up a nether portal. We might take a peek into the nether after this break, so I'll see you in just a minute. Alright guys, so I went ahead and I built out a little bit of a walkway over here, lit it all up, and we fenced it off. So when pigmen do spawn, they'll just hang out over here. They won't be able to get to us. 
I don't know if they're aggressive by default or if they're just neutral, but whatever. We always want to have a little bit of protection between us and them. Just in case, you never know, I might aggro them on the other side, come through the portal and maybe they spawn on this side aggroed or who knows. But anyway, I got a few things on me and I put up a lot of stuff. Uh, so we're taking a little bit of cobblestone. In fact, I should probably grab some more because we're going to want to protect our portal. We might have to build out a platform. I should probably think about actually getting a crafting table as well. We might need to make slabs. Yeah, we don't really know what's all on the other side. Do that and I will make it into a crafting station slab. Okay, I think we're probably ready. We got some torches, got some food. Taking my pick. It isn't the best pick in the world, uh, but it is our only pick. So let's check this out. So we'll go ahead and start the nether up. Let's get all this stuff off my hotbar. Okay. Um, I was going to put the flint and steel up, but you know, I think it would probably be a good idea to take it with us. And in fact, I'm going to take a chest too, so I can stick the flint and steel next to the portal. Because a gas might knock it out, or who knows. Okay, I'd use this crafting table, but I already got stuff in there for hammering, so that's why I keep going over to this one. So we will just make a chest. We got a crafting table. I think we got everything we need. We got a pick. We got blocks. Can't think of anything else we're going to need. Uh, we have a bow. You know, didn't I have a power two bow? I got a power two bow off a enemy before. Maybe I toss it or something. No, it's right here. I think we'll take the power two. That might be a little bit better. Oh, you know what? We don't have a weapon. I think we're going to take our mad talk with us. This was fairly easy to level up, so I'm not afraid of losing it. Um, so we'll put that there. Blocks here. We'll put that in the number three slot. That's where I'm used to. Uh, <laughs> that's where I'm used to pressing for a sword or whatever. I think we're ready to go. Let's do this, guys. You ready? Let's do it. Downloading terrain. This is taking a minute to load. Uh-oh. Is another not pre-generated? Guess not. Ooh, okay. For a second there, I thought we were just gonna fall into the void like that was some kind of evil trap. Uh, looks like... Okay, I'm out. <laughs> I was gonna say, this looks like there's no problem, but hearing an explosion right away. Oh, man. Um, okay, let's get away from the portal for just a minute. What do we got over here? What is this? Tainted soil, nether rack. All right, so we got our ores, nether quartz. Okay, so that's loading in. Good. Let's do an F3A. All right, so this is kind of an enclosed room here. Got a little spot up there. Just peeking around, seeing what we got. So we got lapis and redstone right away, some copper here. Uh, what we're kind of looking for also is sulfur. I know we're going to find a lot of it around, but we're going to need that pretty quick. Um, yeah, it's more copper. Okay, well, we came here, and it's not too bad. When I came to the nether in Agrarian Skies 1, there were, like, a lot of enemies right here. <laughs> well... In the general area, a lot of the silverfish had spawned, and that was really freaky. But this doesn't look too bad at all. So, i tell you guys what. I'm going to go ahead and box in our portal just in case. There's a lot of flat area here where gas could spawn. Uh, yeah, I'll box in our portal, and I'll start making our way into the nether, and we'll check it out. So, I'll see you guys in just a minute. All right, guys, so I built a little bit of an enclosure here. I put a portal, or I'm sorry, not a portal. <laughs> I put a waypoint next to our portal, so we always know where it is while we're in the nether. And these chunks keep doing this weird thing. F3A. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we got just a cobble box. It's nothing pretty, but we do have a fence gate here. So in case something's chasing us and we need to get away, we should be able to do that. And I put that at ground level because I don't know if we're going to have... Uh, hellfish or whatever spawning in here. I don't think they can fit underneath the fence gate. In fact, I'm pretty sure they can't. So yeah, that's the reason for that. So I was looking in our quest book, and it said that we had to go to a certain coordinate to find a surprise. And that coordinate is at negative 155. 
And then 141, you can kind of see where the mouse cursor is. 155, 141. So you can double click right there and that'll put um, the coordinates here. Alternatively, you could just type them in. And this is actually supposed to be a Y88. So let's change that right here. All right, so this is gonna be, surprise. <laughs> uh, so let's save that, yep. So that is right where we need to go. Uh, that's where our quest book tells us we need to go. And that is over here. All right, so there's like a little thing dug out. Um, I am afraid actually. <laughs> is it gonna be like a big lava pool? Is that what the surprise is? I mean, we can see right there, it's 10 blocks away-ish on the diagonal. So we'll just dig over here. I hear a lot of fire around. Oh, is this going to be a blaze spawner? I can hear pigs. Imps or whatever. That's just another rack there. Uh, that's still another rack. Okay, did I put in those coordinates wrong? This is 155, 141, and 88. All right, well, <laughs> I don't have the quest book on me because I wasn't sure if we were gonna have to like go all the way around to find this place. Um, let's head back to the overworld real quick and just see if that is what the quest book actually wanted. Maybe I should take it with me. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Maybe the surprise is that's just gonna give us like reward for being at that spot. Select the thing. Find a surprise. Visited. I didn't find a surprise. So I don't get it. Okay. Well, we'll choose a reward bag, and we're gonna get an emerald. The end is a lie. Okay. Hold on a second. Let's go ahead and open this reward bag. It is a basic one, so probably nothing super good. Uh, that is a potato. <laughs> we already had a potato battery, didn't we? I think we did somewhere. I don't know where I put it. I feel like we had one. Oh yeah, it's right here. That's a flux capacitor, and this is a jetpack. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this jetpack, when you use it, explodes and I think that would kill me yeah that is not something that I want to use <laughs> I've played this game I played modded for long enough to know not to make a potato jetpack okay so I'm not sure what that surprise actually was I kind of want to go back there and dig around because I didn't really find anything there but that was the correct spot so maybe we should go back, dig around a little bit, see if there's something actually there. Maybe the Y coordinate was wrong. Maybe there is something above it that I didn't find. But it's not too far here from where we spawn in. Oh, are we supposed to come up this way maybe? Maybe that's what we're supposed to do. We weren't supposed to dig for it. Let's just see. Um, F3. Hey. <laughs> That's weird holding down F3 actually cycles all that stuff. It didn't used to do that before. Yeah, this is all blocked in. Hmm. Okay, so we'll go back to the surprise area. Let's just dig around it a little bit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, well, I'm not exactly sure what the surprise is, but I do hear there's a bunch of... Oh, you know what? Maybe... Okay, I was thinking these are imps over here, but are they regular pigs? There are imps. I see something over there in the distance. I'm not sure what that is. That's what I was looking at. So it says find a surprise, but I'm not sure what that surprise was. There's glowstone around. Oh, you know what? The beam extends up higher. Welp. <laughs> I don't get it. 
Yeah, I definitely don't understand uh, what that surprise was supposed to be. Maybe it's just a uh, just go to this location kind of a thing. The surprise is there is no surprise. Hmm. Well, if I miss something, you guys know about it. Let me know in the comments down below. But, yeah, I don't understand what's going on there. So, <laughs> I guess we're just going to move on. I'll start collecting some resources around here. Uh, one thing I do want to do is get a Silk Touch pickaxe. Or a hammer, actually. Probably a hammer. Um, yeah, all these ores, including Nether Quartz ore, will explode randomly when you mine one next to it. Like, it'll turn into a piece of TNT, it'll count down, and then it'll explode. Uh, if you Silk Touch it, that doesn't happen, or at least it didn't used to happen. Uh, they might have changed it, I don't know. But, yeah, I definitely want to get Silk Touch so we can check that out. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to go around and collect some resources, see what I can find. If I find anything interesting, I'll let you guys know about it. But we'll be right back, guys. Well, guys, I've clicked a little bit of stuff, but every time <laughs> I go and mine an ore, it seems like a hellfish spawns. And yeah, I just kind of have to back away. It also seems like the uh, chance that the ores will explode is very, very high. Like, it's almost 50-50, I'd have to say. Uh, I started getting these gluttony shards. I'm not sure what these are. I was just getting those just by eating food. So I don't know, maybe when your hunger is over a certain level, or I guess your saturation is over a certain level and you eat, it gives you these? I mean, I don't know, maybe it's another only thing? <laughs> I was just eating my bread and we got them. Uh, but yeah, we got a bunch of hellfish here, and it doesn't feel like they are despawning or going into blocks. Which is a problem, so I don't know how much more of this I want to do. Well, with these guys around. I don't want to spawn a whole bunch of them. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want them to get next to me either. When they touch you, they set you on fire. Luckily, we haven't died to it. Uh, but another thing that I saw. Uh, these imps. Imps drop imp leather. And I think four of those turn into a regular leather. Is that what that is? Yeah, four of those turn into two leather. So if we could farm some of that imp leather, I think we'd be good... Uh, to make a jetpack here pretty quick. So I saw there was a few of these guys around. I don't know if they turn hostile. They got a decent amount of health though. But yeah, I don't know if they turn hostile when you punch them. I think it's time to find out. What is that? Another diamond ore. We need manulin to harvest it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and not die and kill some of these guys. No, nope. no, they're just passive. Okay. That's good to know. Two hits takes them down. And how much are we doing on the imp leather? Wow, we got a lot of imp leather. Okay, so we're going to have leather here, no problem. Let's just go and get rid of these guys real quick. But it's also going to give us a bit of the imp food or whatever that is. The green steaks. That doesn't look very appetizing. Let's get this stuff over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, where are you? I hear you. I hear you snorting. Ah, oh, you're right there. And you're dead. Okay, so we got 25 imp leather, which is going to turn into 6, no, 12 regular leather. Okay, I think we're going to be good on this stuff. Um, yeah, we did get a little bit of the of the nether quartz ore. I got 7 of those, but like I said, I'm breaking the blocks, and not only does it set things to explode mode, I keep hitting F1 instead of 1, uh, not only does it set things to explode mode, but like silverfish keep popping out of them. Yeah, let's check that out. Yeah. Oh, is that redstone? Just on the ground right there. Oh, that's silverfish. Okay, we're running. Running time. We're out of here. I don't want to be set on fire. Thank you. But there was redstone on the ground down there. Can we uh, juke the silverfish? I don't think he knows where I am. Let's head back over here for a minute. Redstone. I don't know where that came from. Did it come from this uh, this tree? Maybe the leaves drop redstone? I don't know, but we got a piece of it. Uh, what about this iron ore? Is this something? If you mine it quick enough. If you mine it quick enough, you get all the blocks that are going to explode. You can get them. Okay. So, yeah, we got three iron there. Let me get some copper. That wasn't too bad. But yeah, all these silverfish, like I said, they don't appear to be despawning. You can see them on the map here, kind of like searching around, going random directions, and all of this stuff. So I'm going to have to deal with those at some point or another. 
So I really don't want to spawn too many around like where a portal is because that's just going to make getting back that much of a pain. At least not until we get a jetpack going on. Looks like more nether diamond ore right there. Maybe that is nether platinum. I'm not sure. But I tell you guys what, I'm going to try and make it back to the base. We'll look at uh, getting things ready. Maybe we'll be able to make a jetpack. I don't know if we have the resources for that or not. But yeah, uh, I'll meet you guys back at our base. Alright guys, well we made a successful nether adventure out of that trip. I was thinking that we might be able to make a jetpack, but then I looked at the recipe once again and we still do not have sulfur. Uh, we can pulverize coal, I think, to get sulfur, or we can find sulfur ore or things like this, but I think we'll probably save that for next episode. Uh, being able to fly around is definitely going to be cool, but the leadstone jetpack only holds 25,000 RF and it doesn't last for a very very long time uh, I kinda wanna go directly up to the hardened jetpack that does require the leadstone and then another one of these and all of this stuff and more of this and yeah anyway we need some resources I think I wanna go straight to the hardened jetpack we'll leave the leadstone behind hopefully we'll be able to get that accomplished next episode uh, we'll have to set up some machines like a pulverizer like I was saying to try and get that uh, sulfur hopefully we'll be able to do that though but yeah, guys, that's it for this episode of Agrarians, guys. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you enjoyed our nether adventure. We didn't find a surprise, but again, if you guys know what that surprise is supposed to be, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you did like it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.